Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of NCAST. I'm your host, Prince Ayo, and I have a special guest with me. What up, what up, what up? Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. Emeka, how you doing? What's going on, people? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, and um, sorry that uh, Brian couldn't make it. He actually had some stuff to do today, but uh, he's here in spirit. You know how it goes. <laughs> uh, so, Emeka, let's just get started with this podcast. What you been up to, man? Man, I mean, quarantine and chill, right? That's what that's what we've all been up to. You know, you see, we got our gloves on and ninety five masks. You know, mm-hmm. trying to stay safe out here. Um, you know, everybody stay at home, stay at mm-hmm. home. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just just trying to keep grinding, man. Mm-hmm. Keep grinding amongst this uh, this global pandemic. Yeah, keep global. Up, you know, you know, still you know, trying to uh, make some moves and uh, keep progressing. So. Yeah, definitely. But like under the circumstance, you kind of like just ended up like coming back. Yeah, man. So I, it's funny that I'm, I'm back in the area now. I mean, everybody kind of knows that I, I I'm in and out of the DMV every now and then. But mm-hmm. um, for right now, I mean, I mainly stay up in the New York area. So I just happened to be back on the weekend, and as soon as I came back, man, they freaking shut down the whole tri-state area. Ground zero. Ground, you know what I'm saying? Ground yeah. zero. So. It's bad out there. I think they said they, I mean, at this point now, I think, you know, don't quote me on the numbers, but they're, they're up there as far as in, in the New York area, up to maybe like 80,000 cases and in the New Jersey area, probably close to, you know, 25,000 cases and stuff like that. So, you know, things is going up there. So I was here visiting for my peoples for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I just I kept on getting these like, almost like Amber alerts on my phone and talking about, the New Jersey state governor and the New York, you know, Governor Cuomo is making all the shutdowns and everybody stay home. And then uh, it's well, Jersey, Delaware, and New York, right? It's uh, well, the tri-state. I mean, when they say tri-state, they mean like Jersey, you know, New York, Connecticut, okay, that type Connecticut, area. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. And then I was getting these messages, and then what really hit me bad is that there was a uh, an article that weekend that came out um, that said that my neighborhood was like the hottest zone in that area. And wow. they had like, it was some weird, something weird. It was like they had an unknown amount of cases with an unknown amount of people, something weird. And so after that, I was like, all right, I'm much out of this chill here. Yeah, so, safer here. Yeah, safer here, you know? Yeah, Governor Hogan's doing his thing here and there, trying to get things popping here. So it, it's definitely- Well, in the DMV area, at least in Maryland, like the cases are going up, it's like, I saw statistics at like at least four thousand. Bro, it's cases. going. It's it's, it's got to be up. going up. I mean, a lot of that is due to you know people, more people getting tested and stuff like that. But yeah. at the same time, it's like numbers are numbers. If it's going up, it's still going up. Whether it's you know those people are getting tested or not, I mean, yeah, they may get tested, but you know, even the people that are getting tested, not all of them are being admitted into hospitals. So some of them are like, all right, go home and self quarantine. Yeah, self quarantine. You know, self isolate. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. You know, numbers are numbers. If the things are going up, then, you know, it still means that this is something that we haven't had full control over. So, Mm-mm. but yeah, but yeah, you know, still trying to stay positive though, you know? Just yeah, no, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's what I've been saying like every episode. Like, even though we give updates, like, it's still like trying to stay positive. Just the exactly. time to like, one, get to know yourself and try to build some skill and try to do something with your life, like whether exercise more, just gain new hobbies even right. though you're working from home or you're going straight to work and back you can still like add more value to your life exactly. this is the time right now exactly but um i also believe that uh social media helps amplify it so much more so that's why it's important for like meditation and just like stepping away from the world sometimes because it could be a lot oh absolutely social media can really be like the best and worst thing yeah when it comes to our, our our generation because it's like you get news so quick you're able to react a little faster react faster and, and connect with people globally all over the place but at the same time it's like there's a lot of propaganda and a lot of bs that the media pushes out so social media is no different you have people out there who are reading stories you know that are misquoting stats or yeah. just putting things out there just to make sure that people think a certain way and you know Everybody follows all these trends and stuff like that, and it's you know it's good to, to extent you know to have you know a little uh, stress relief or you know have some type of you know 
out, you know, someplace outside of the, of the real world and stuff like that, you know, to chill. But sometimes social media gets gets way too serious yeah. and, and then and takes a takes a big chunk out of real life. So <laughs> I, I hear that. But uh, let's step away from that segment with the coronavirus and social media. Let's get towards you, man. Like, so you, you were telling me off air that like you're an engineer and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like, let's let our audience know a little bit about that. I mean, uh, what you can tell us, I guess. Man, yeah, I can't tell you how the kids like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so I'm an engineer, uh, biomedical and mechanical by trade. So okay. that's what I uh, went to college for. Um, right now, I'm kind of more so in the industrial mechanical automation space okay so um basically what i do is i uh help manage and um, build projects for automation equipment so the type of automation equipment we make is like stuff that you may see in a factory or a plant or something like that and it's basically just like industrial computers and industrial um like manufacturing systems and stuff like that. So, so those are our main products. And uh, I'm an engineer, so I try to get my hands dirty every now and then um, doing stuff. But uh, it's also a lot of like, you know, computing and, you know, calculating, calculating and, type yeah, stuff. Measurements. So, yeah. I guess you, I guess you. Yeah. But you say you also have to go out in the field too. Like it's not just like a desk job for you, right? Yeah, man. So honestly, my job, I would say, is maybe 70 percent travel Mm. i would say maybe closer to 75 bro i'm always on the road it's ridiculous like mainly when i'm in you know the new york and new jersey area whatever um i'm driving to different customers and you Mm. know different plants and stuff like that um but we also do a lot of like you know fly here for a project or you know, fly here for a couple of weeks in the summer to do this, you mm-hmm. know, set up or start up or that type of stuff. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm in the field a lot. So, it's it could either be as as simple as going to a customer or, you know, trying to sell them a new product or a new contract, or it could be as complicated as going to a manufacturing facility and trying to rewire a whole drive system and then, mm. and then code it and then start it up and then start doing production and stuff so it, it varies it varies um but yeah so i mean that's 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 what i'm in currently um i don't know is that like a long-term like goal for you or do you have other ambitions yeah so that's that's the thing so like i said i'm, I'm a biomedical engineer by trade so when i was in college i was all about building prosthetics yeah engineer Um, stuff yeah yeah yeah. building prosthetics um mechanical legs arms and joints and hips and stuff like that um and then so i'm kind of in like a career shift a little bit still doing stuff that's um applicable in some areas of engineering but it's not exactly the same so i do see you know maybe in the future kind of transitioning closer into some of those areas, but you know, you never know, you know. So that, mm-hmm. we have to see how that how that plays out. I was always always a guy that's like, I was never too pinned down on one idea of what it meant to be an engineer or anything like that. But I was always in the headspace where it's like, all right, if I'm an engineer, I can you know build a pathway this way, you know. Um, but I can also have a mindset to want to develop things on the side in an in a entrepreneurial space or, you know, just in the space of, you know, personal investments and stuff like that. So, so yeah, the head was always here, but, you know, you get always got Different space. avenues, yeah, options. Yeah, different avenues and options. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I did an episode, like, I think two, three episodes now about paradigm shift. And that's part of the paradigm shift, even mm-hmm. though, like, the guy who, like, came up with the scientific revolution of a paradigm shift mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was like stating like yeah like science is more about like being a practitioner mm-hmm. and like understanding the field and then the scientific revolution is what they find out from that result right you know what i'm saying like a lot of scientists tend to be like arrogant and then right. very critical and you thought a lot of people think like that's a notion like that's what it meant to be a scientist mm-hmm. but it's like nah it's about being a practitioner and then finding the results and right. then giving it to the people. Right. And that's part of the results too. Like you're, you're, even though you're an engineer, 
you still notice that you have other avenues that you can like taste Absolutely. in. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So. Yeah, I mean, what do they always say? That you want to have how many streams of income or whatever coming yeah. in, stuff like that. I mean, to me, it's always just been trying to have something that I can either pass down or I know that is working for me while I'm working for someone else, yeah. you know? Or in the space where it's like, all right, I want to have some type of entrepreneurial freedom or some type of career freedom at some point in my life in the near future or even in the far future. So in order for me to make space and room for that, I need to start getting things in line on the side Side now. Right. So let that start building. Exactly. Start letting that build. So which which is great. That's great because like we're under our thirties right now, you know. What I'm yeah. saying? So like, it yeah. could take up to ten years, right? Yeah. It could take as long as it needs to take. That thirty number gets closer and closer every day. I, right? I look at it as a new twenties, honestly. Like, yeah. A lot of people don't even have kids by thirty nowadays, so. That's I'm, true. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, even though a couple people we know keeps telling me like I'm aging them on their numbers. Yeah, I'm just man. like I'm just like, listen, bro, it's the new twenties, all right? Like you're still young at thirty. Dude, Life's not over. <laughs> I always tell people I, I just hit my quarter life crisis when I, <laughs> when I turn twenty five, man. Yeah. It's, it's like you start thinking about like, damn, I'm not that young no more. I'm still young, but like some things aren't acceptable. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't do yeah, yeah. no more. Like, yeah. yeah, I need, I need, to, I need to start growing up a little bit. But, yeah. but no, nah, no, nah. every everything is, you know, it's, it's there's a lot of good stuff to come. There's yeah. a lot of good stuff to come for all of us. So, just as long as we still keep hustling and still try to keep, you know, our mindset in the right thing, I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll have a good couple next year. So it's a it's a uphill battle. And it's only going to get harder. Even though we get smarter, it's only going to get harder. Mm-hmm. So we might as well get used to like the grind, you know? Yeah, you know, it, it, I was, it's funny when you think about it. It's like as you grow older, and, you know, and as cheesy as it, you know, sounds is, you know, what they say in Marvel, great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Not like that, but like as you get more responsibility, as you grow older, like you see how much like that freedom comes at a cost, yeah. right? That freedom comes at a cost of, you know, Sometimes stress and sometimes, you know, having to put, you know, work harder for certain things and push harder for certain things because you're, you know, that freedom comes with age. So yeah. you're more responsible for certain stuff. But, you know, you can't really, you know, if you compare it when you were a kid and there's certain things that you weren't allowed to do, but, you know, you didn't have a care in the world because you only needed to care about having fun or toys and maybe finishing your homework every now and then, you know, so. Yeah. Um. It's also about working effectively, so like working smart too. Right. I think even though we're like advocating for working hard, that just comes with age. You're gonna get tired more, but like yeah. when you get older, you're also working more effectively. Like, what's more effective? Me, you know, staying up to two a.m. every day doing the same stuff in my twenties, or are you gonna actually get like a better schedule right. to put in effective hours so it can help you the next day and the next right. day? You know, like compound interest just keeps adding up stuff like right. that. I always say I always say now like this age this time period we're in is the time where like we're not gonna have as much energy as we have now in yeah. the future. So you still you want to grind hard and grind it out, but you also want to be smart and smart about it to give yourself that longevity. You yeah. Know? So even though you want to grind out, you know, pull up, you know, on long nights and stuff like that, you still gotta make sure you're getting your you know, your mental health in there, your physical health in there, your stress relief in there. That way, you're working smarter, like you said. Yeah, so. it makes sense. Like, mental stamina, I guess. Yeah, like, A little yeah. endurance behind it. It makes a lot of sense. Um, what else I going to talk about? Um, your cousin, Ike. Do you, do you still relate with him? Do you, uh, how's, how's he doing? Oh, man, I love Ike, man. Yeah. Ike, Ike, is my, Ike is my right-hand man. The know? reason why I bring it up, because I see him, like, actually traveling to Nigeria, like, helping the kids out and stuff like that. So, like, he's living an interesting life, so I might as well, like, just, like, mention him on the podcast, too. It, you know, um, shout-out to Ike, you know, yeah. what's up with you? Uh, no, I, I love Ike today. That's, that's my, that's my, he's my cousin, but it's more like my brother, for real. Um, it's funny, because my, uh, my real brother's name was Ike, so. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> um, but, uh. But yeah, no, that's, he's like, you know, what's that, uh, that Dos Equis commercial, the most interesting man, man in the world? world? Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of how, like, I guess, man, he's, he's the most interesting dude I know. Like, he, one day he'll be, you know, in the streets of Miami doing stuff with bars and stuff like that. And next thing you know, he'll be 
overseas in Dubai, you know, doing some type of, you know, trying to do some business there, doing whatever. So, um, but, you know, one thing I, I always say about Ike is, like, he's real, as flashy as he gets and as as wild as, you know, he can be, he's yeah. always, like, big on family. Like, his biggest thing is, you know, making sure the family's cool and the family can to move forward and shit like that. So yeah. that's that's one thing that's that's always get hard about him. But he's cool, man. He's I never know what he's doing. I talk like maybe one you know, every couple of weeks, you know, just to check in, see how things are going, laugh about stuff. Um but that comes with age. You know yeah. what I mean? Every as we adults we gotta do our own thing. So yeah. as long as you check in on each other, see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know. He could be, you know, knowing him, he could be overseas doing something right now, to be <laughs> honest. I might just text him right now and see what's going on with him, now that, now that you mentioned him. But yeah. he's, he's always good. He's always in a good spot. Nah, I, like I said, like, I see him sometimes on social media, and it, like, really surprised me. I'm like, oh, he's already in Nigeria. Like, he's helping with, like, foundations and stuff like yeah, that. Stuff like yeah. that. I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right, I see you. I see you. He tries to, you know. You got to give back as well. So yeah. he definitely tries to. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely what's up. Um... One thing I should mention is before I did any of my branding, any of like my e-commerce store, this podcast, and Mecca was probably one of the first people I talked about this with. I don't know if you're absolutely yeah, yeah, car, right? the, yeah. car, the car right. It's absolutely. like two years we ago. Came up with <laughs> yeah, yeah. We parked out and we talked about this. Yeah. Absolutely. So like, day. it's crazy how like. I let it like manifest from that day on, and just like two years later, we're like sitting here in the podcast. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gotta get get a big shout out to Mecca, yeah. you know Chico Chisholm. You know, yeah. <laughs> not even, not even. It's funny you say that. Not even shout out to me, but honestly, man, like just seeing you grind every day and, yeah. and seeing you focus on um of really developing something is, is really inspirational, man. Because I remember that conversation. Yeah, I remember you asking me. You know, we we're, we're sitting down there, and I'm like, yo, like if you want to do something, this is no better time to do it. Like just grind it out. You know, take the adequate steps here and there. You gotta mess up here and there, but yeah. that's part of the journey. So, it's 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 been a slow moving two years, but a lot of stuff has has changed. A yeah. lot of stuff has progressed, and to see where this stuff is now, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. I always like to see my brothers doing good stuff, man. <laughs> it's always it's always good to see people you, that you came up with doing good stuff. Whether it's you, Lance, you know, Rob, anybody. So, I actually gotta get Lance back on here. I think I'm gonna do like a. Skype interview with him again. I just want to catch up with him and stuff like that. I already talked to him about it. But yeah. yeah, man. Like it's like you said, it's like a crazy like slow two years, but a lot has happened and there's no blueprint. Yeah. Like when I when we had that conversation, it was just like, yo, I think I'm about to just do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was just like, I think I'm about to just do it and like I'll see where I go with it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's and honestly that's bro, that's how eighty I mean, I'm not gonna say what the number is, but a large percentage of good entrepreneurial either businesses or you know ideas a lot of that stuff starts that way it's like nobody really has you know the cheat codes or like know? a roadmap the roadmap yeah. you know what i'm saying especially for a lot of us and, and where we come from not a lot of us have that that roadmap but we have to you know go through those trials and tribulations and then when we kind of find our path and find our niche then we start to build yeah. from there so but um but yeah man that's the the journey is like watching Watching the growth is always fun because I bet you five years from now, we're really going to sit back and look back at this moment and sit back and look at that moment again yeah. and be like, damn, bro. Like, <laughs> like it just, it's just like building. Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Saying? A lot of stuff is going to change. A lot of good stuff is going to change. A lot of stuff, as long as we keep that mindset and like everybody stays on the same page, like, it, it's going to be good. It's going to be like good stuff. Uh, speaking of mindset, that mental sanity, like I've been doing a lot more like meditating so like mm -hmm. that that helps too like mm -hmm. like you said a little bit earlier in the podcast like keeping you know knowing your mental state and mental health and stuff like that 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 actually like helps a long way whatever field you're in as you're getting older because like there's gonna be changes right. sometimes it's hard to adapt to the changes so you gotta like make sure you got clarity in your mind yeah i mean honestly now i would say one going back to social media a little bit one of the good things that's kind of developed in you know especially amongst minorities in the culture in the last couple of years is to focus on mental health and, and, you know, not being afraid to share certain things, you know, especially with, with, you know, young men not being afraid to admit that they have certain type of issues or certain type of drawbacks. And so being able to be open about stuff like meditation or therapy yeah. or taking time for, for journaling and stuff like that, you know, um, that stuff is really important. That stuff is really important for a lot of people that 
that does a lot of good work. And, you know, as, as for myself, I just started, you know, trying to meditate and, and journal and, and stuff like that and see what it does for me. I'm like really, even though I appear to be really chill yeah. and really laid back, I'm really, really hyperactive in my head. Like I'm always calculating shit and like looking around and like, you know, think, look, thinking about, you know, what, what's, you know, what's serve, next and stuff. What's next, yeah. surveying the room. So, you know, kind of doing that stuff, you know, the meditation and all that can be kind of hard sometimes because, you know, you try to sit there and meditate, focus on something and your mind is all over the place. But uh, I encourage people to really, you know, look into that stuff, whether it's therapy, meditation, or even as simple as taking some time out for yourself to just go for a Chill. walk, you know, yeah. write or do whatever, you know. So, uh, yeah, journaling just helps like organize your thoughts. Yeah, that, I mean, I've been I've been doing it since like last month, <laughs> and like I've noticed how like I'm organizing my thoughts. At the beginning, I was just like, I don't know what I want to write down. Right. And as I get into it more and more, and sometimes it didn't have to be every day. Just when you feel like a lot of like anxiety going on, you just start organizing your thoughts. It helps out a lot. Absolutely, a lot. So it's, it's 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 good to be able to like. Especially, you know, I'll give an example. If you're going through, like, a rough time or something like that and, you know, you're journaling and you're keeping up to things day to day, when you look back from, like, a month from now and, like, you're, you're, you may have been down in the dumps at that time or you're, you know, you may have been really disorganized, you didn't know where your thoughts are or where to, you know, organize stuff next, just being able to write stuff down and look at your history and look at certain things. Where you, you came from. Where you came from in the past week, you know, past couple of days. It can really help you, you know, organize and get a roadmap for what you want to start doing in the next couple of days to improve and stuff like that. So just organi organization can just, you know, go really far with that. So yeah. Mental organization. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, but um, other than that, I got you with shout out with the, you know, helping me start up with this brand. Talk Absolutely. about uh, mental health. Any last words you want to talk about before we uh, conclude the show? Nah, man. I mean... I, I, well, or like what any like word of advice people could probably take away from this show I always like to do like closing thoughts before I uh, end the show and stuff like yeah, that yeah I think um, you know if anything that we've talked about today is um, you know that journey is gonna it's gonna go at it's own pace and mm -hmm. you know there's things that are gonna go wrong here and there Yeah. but if you just stick to it and you know Persist. try to use whatever resources are in arm's reach you know whoever there to help you and there to inspire you to get to motivate you to, to help you pick the pieces together along the way you know a year goes by or a day goes by a week you know a month year when you look back you gotta be glad he did it yeah. so you know just uh i'm not the the you know, the big motivation guy whatever not the motivational speaker but you know that shit's real yeah. that shit's real so if if, if you uh if anybody never told you, you're hearing it from here from us. So, definitely, whatever you want in life, you can have it. You just gotta persistently go after it, like to a point where you're almost obsessed. It's how bad you want it. At the yeah. End of the day. How yeah. bad you want it? Cause Absolutely. everyone wants it too, you know. So there's enough for everybody to eat. Yeah. There's, there's enough for, for to go around. That's a, so. that's a fact, though. So get yours. Get exactly. yours. Everybody can eat, man. Everybody can eat, B. Everybody can eat. Everybody <laughs> eats, B. Everybody eats. You heard there, me. Yeah, exactly. And cast originals. There you go. There you go. There you go. But um, that'll conclude our show. Thank you for watching. And until next time. Tune in. Yeah, next. Ah, next. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> one world and woke up in another. Suddenly Disney is out of magic. Paris is no longer romantic. New York doesn't stand up anymore. The Chinese wall is no longer a fortress. And Mecca is empty. Hugs and kisses suddenly become weapons. Not visiting parents and friends becomes an act of love. Suddenly you realize that power, beauty, and money are worthless. And that these cannot get you the oxygen you're looking for. The world continues its life and it's beautiful. But it puts humans in cages. I think it's sending you and I a message. The air, earth, water, and sky are fine without you. When you come back, remember that you're my guests, not my masters. All pain, all pain, drop, tell me, don't